No, there's Levi Strauss, ticker symbol L-E-V-I, took a little bit of a hit today after they reported their earnings. They're down about actually uh, over 7% just today alone, and it's also been beaten up quite a bit this year. Uh, take a closer look at the numbers here, but I will tell you before we get started, one thing that I have liked about Levi in the past is it's that brand. They have the brand name rather than going to like a retail store, let's say, that sells Levi's and maybe Levi says, hey, we don't want to be here anymore. It's not like a department store. Those are really what concerns me in the retail space. I prefer to invest in brand names like Levi, maybe like a Nike. Nike's too expensive, but just an example, I'd rather invest in the brand than the store itself. Now, with that said, let's take a little bit of a look at uh, some of the numbers. Let's see kind of why they did fall uh, today. Starting here, you see their Q, uh, let's see, Q2 earnings for the business came in at four cents on the earnings per share. That beat by one penny. Uh, the revenue was in line, but you'll see the reason for the big fall today was revenue expectations for the year are now one and a half percent to two and a half percent. That was a cut from prior expectations of one and a half to three percent. I don't think that was the big concern. Here's the bigger concern here the earnings per share expectations. Are now a dollar and ten to a dollar and twenty. Previously, they were a dollar thirty to a dollar forty, and also analyst expectations were for a dollar and twenty nine cents. So, don't like to see when those companies actually come in and cut those earnings expectations. I think that's a large reason why they fell. I will point out another thing. If you see here, it says our inventory backlog created supply chain challenges in our U.S. distribution centers, resulting in our inability to fulfill all demand. The lower fill rate resulted in higher customer out of stock and less newness on the floor the last few quarters. We're taking a number of actions to address these issues, regain competitiveness, and restore growth to our U.S. wholesale business. Now, you'll notice they also go on to say that it's just the wholesale styles that are having issues. They're not making any changes in their direct-to-consumer business. So one thing I'd want to understand is how big is their wholesale business and also too, how big is their direct to consumer business. One thing I always tell people is I love when retail companies go through inventory problems. Reason being is it's a fixable problem. Now, not all companies can get through it, but in most cases, this is something that businesses can resolve. Now, is there other issues that Levi is going through individually? Perhaps that's where more research would come in. But I will tell you off the bat, this is something that's quite intriguing to me because that inventory problem, for the most part, as long as you have good leadership, is a pretty easy fixable problem in the long term. Doesn't mean it's going to happen next quarter, maybe not even the next two quarters, but most likely over the next two, three years, it should be addressed and should be fixed. Now with that, let's take a closer look at the numbers because that's what is really important when we are looking at investing in businesses here at Wilsey Asset Management. Again, we're looking at Levi Strauss, that ticker symbol is L-E-V-I. We know they're in the apparel manufacturing business. This is kind of surprising. Short percentage of float, 12%. That is a pretty high short percentage there. I always tell people this. One thing that is intriguing is on the potential upside is if all of a sudden Levi turns around, the shorts have to start covering on the stock. That is actually a benefit as they have to buy it back, which sends the stock price higher. So good companies that have high short positions actually can be a benefit for stock price appreciation. Looking at institutional ownership here, 81%, so largely institutional owned. We see price to earnings multiple 10.8 below the industry average of 26.9. That's a positive. Price to sales at 0.8 below the industry average of 1.1, also a positive there. Price to tangible book value, four below the industry at 20.3. Nothing for price to cash flow. I want to know what the heck's going on there. Why don't they have any cash flow? I have to dig a little bit deeper into the cash flow statement. Look at that peg ratio. That's your PE divided by growth at 3.7. Also very intriguing compared to the industry at 12.9. Earnings per share over the last one year down 16%, but sales were flat or up 0.3%. Uh, I'm assuming that a lot of that has to do with perhaps cost of goods sold. Maybe a lot of input costs did rise, but we want to understand how sales stayed flat, but earnings did take quite a big hit there. Do see going forward over the next five years, earnings per share growth is estimated at 3.4%. That's positive. I do like to see the dividend here. Yield is 3.7%, and the payout ratio is only 37.1%. I like to see that. That's a pretty sound dividend yield for, for a business like Levi. 
Company has also bought back shares with a buyback yield of 2%, another positive for the business. Turning to the balance sheet, current ratio 1.5 below the industry average of 1.9. While it is lower, I still think a 1.5 current ratio still provides the business with enough liquidity. Debt to equity at 110% or 1.1, better than the industry average of 1.2. It's getting a little bit on the high side, but nothing that I, I'm necessarily worried about at this rate. Also looking here at the profit margin, 7.8%, better than the industry average, 4.3%. That's a positive. Return on equity, wow, 24.8. And return on invest of capital, also positive at 12.4. Now looking at the current price for Levi, $13.13. .13. The 52-week high, well, that's $20.49. And the 52-week low is $12.80. See year-to-date, the stock's down 14.1% over the last one year, also down about 14.4%. Good sized company with a $5.2 billion market cap there. Now going forward for Levi, we go out, you can see here to November, 2024, see the estimated earnings per share is $1.35. It trades at a forward PE at 10.5. I like to sell out of businesses when it hits 16.6. So at a forward PE multiple of 10 and a half, that is very, very attractive. I like where Levi is at in terms of its valuations. As I said, I kind of liked what I saw in terms of the potential problems, and I do believe they are fixable problems. It would require a little bit more research, but overall, I think I'd have to rate Levi a buy, especially after the fall today. I would want to listen through to that conference call, just make sure I'm not missing anything else. But the numbers do look good on the business. Now, I hope that was helpful to you. If you did find it interesting, looking for more stock analysis, we do have that on our channel. Or be sure to subscribe for future videos that we will be posting here as well.